Hey guys, this is the very next Let's Build with JavaScript. And for this one, I figured we'd do something even more practical than some of the stuff I've been doing, which is uh, something we've actually introduced on Dribbble lately, where I work. And it's the perception of loading state based on the content coming into frame. So if I were to refresh this browser, you'd see actual loading animations and fill backgrounds um, happening there. And I'm kind of toying with a set timeout function just to, to kind of uh, fake that with this pen, but in real life situations where it's maybe a bit poor connection or the data is taking a while to come back from the server or something like that, you need a way to at least tell the user something's happening. And the old school way is there would be this little loading icon, which would often work, but in this case, you can already see what's sort of going to come into to frame so it's kind of a, a nice to have thing in the context of the ui that you built you kind of want to already have a skeleton uh, screen which is what these are kind of referred to as place so that's kind of a nice feature that i figured i'd introduce to you guys um, and a lot of times with this the data coming back is going to be rendered dynamically so you can think of it as coming in as json or some sort of i don't know some sort of state from the server that basically comes in and we wait for a window to load and then when it does that data comes in and it loads and then we do a uh, event listener to tell it to switch some classes so that those backgrounds disappear and we're left with the actual data it kind of sounds complicated but it's really not too bad so what i wanted to do is at least start with a blank slate in terms of the markup that's something i haven't done in these videos where it's i actually introduced the code um, already pre-written in terms of the HTML and CSS. Uh, to save time, I have done the CSS already and it's pretty basic, but we're gonna have a card component that is just invented. I, I made it from scratch, so you can do the same if you wanna tweak it. But I'm gonna start with a container div. And by default on my CSS, I have that set to a margin of two rim, top and bottom, and auto on the left and right. It's max width is 800 and it's using uh, Flexbox just to position it centered on the page. So let's get a card into view. Actually, I want that to be a section of a class of card. And within that, we're gonna have a figure element and it's gonna be called card image. And I'm also gonna have a class called loading that I'm gonna add to anything that's gonna have that background loading state. So you see it here, there's an animation going on, which is in our CSS at the very bottom, an actual animation playing in these keyframes where it's just translating uh, on the X axis over and over and over again. So we're gonna just do an animation here that's uh, infinite and it just keeps looping. So it's kind of a neat little trick that makes it really look like something's happening even though it's not just yet. And then what I wanna do within the card component is have like a details container. So I'll just do a div of uh, card detail. And within that we'll have an H3 of card title. And then again with the loading state, cause I want the actual title to have a field of its own. So you'll see here when that loads, there's gonna be a block that indicates that that is happening. And we're using the same animation on that because we're using the loading class globally. So you can see here on the loading state, we're just reusing that, which is the great thing about classes. And then finally below that, we'll have a P class of description and loading as well. And right now, based on the way I'm doing this, I'm gonna render the data with the JavaScript. So we're gonna think of it in terms of being able to, um, should be card description, excuse me, being injected into the DOM as opposed to just being already there. Uh, you can put it there, but you'd probably have to do a little more fin finesse to get the data out of the way before the DOM is loaded, which is what we're listening for in the end. So it's just something to bear in mind. This is really useful for things coming back from a, like a JSON response or something like that, where you were waiting for that data with maybe a promise or something like that where we'll get into more of that I think later on but it's just kind of a way fail safe way to tell the user something's going to happen 
So going forward, the JavaScript's pretty basic. Uh, we're gonna use a few functions that uh, manipulate some elements according to what data we want to propagate as well as just rendering stuff um, on the load time too. So first of pretty much always we need to set some variables. I'm gonna use const for card image, which will query for uh, obviously card image. Makes sense, I hope. We'll do the same for card title. And one more for the card description. Great. Okay, so with those in place, we can start to think about how we're gonna render our function. And more or less, that's just setting the text content of these divs with JavaScript. But we can do that, wrap it in a function, as well as perform other actions while doing so, which is something we wanna do. So I'm gonna create a function using uh, some, render, some arrow functions, just as shortcuts. Render card will look like this. So this could be either this, if you want to do ES6 syntax, oops, like this, I mean. Like so. Or if you want to go the ES5 kind of way, you could just make it a anonymous function here and just remove the arrow key and you're back in action. Up to you how you want to do that. This is a little cleaner even though it looks a kind of foreign um, if you're new to ESX, but it's okay. If you are, feel free to go the old school way. It works just as well. So we'll do card title since we have that variable now. We can just set the text content, which is a, it's part of the DOM on any element. So if you wanna just see where I get that from, you could just do a const card title, or excuse me, console log card title. And we can open our dev tools. We get the H3 obviously, but what you can look at is all of these elements fixated on this element based on the API of JavaScript itself. So it's kind of nice. Last, but the very not least is the text content one, which we're gonna modify. So inner text, inner HTML all work. Inner HTML expects HTML uh, if you want to render HTML, it will render text just the same. I tend to use text content for text only things. So you can just do, maybe do that as well. So we'll say the card title dot text content camel case is, I just put card title, yo. And I'm mixing my qu quotes here. I'm gonna go back to single quotes just to keep it consistent. So then we'll do card description and do text content for that. And this will be a longer string. I'm gonna use the, I think lorem doesn't work here, but it does in our HTML. So I'll probably steal that from this side. You type lorem and then tab, it'll give you a paragraph back in code pen. Nice little gotcha there. And then finally, uh, we want to toggle some classes with this. So basically when I when the DOM is finished loading or we get that data back, this would maybe come from a JSON response as opposed to just being in our JavaScript like this. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that yet. We'll get into stuff like that soon, I promise. But for now, we're gonna just manipulate basic data with JavaScript. Um, but right now we wanna just toggle the class of loading so when that it does load, these animations go away and we get our actual data. So that's gonna look like this. We're just gonna remove loading from each of those elements that have it over here. So we can start with the title, card image is, well, it's last year, but class.remove loading and then card description class list dot remove is loading. This seems repetitive and there's ways you could do that in a more 
an elegant fashion, maybe looping through and removing the class, um, but you'd have to set up your variables in a different way, maybe as an object. So you could just say like const card equals an object. And then you could say card image. You could just do image actually. And then it'll equal this query selector. And then you could just target it by card.image. If you feel like doing that, you can also do it like this if you want to target it this way. It's another way to access an object with a key value. Uh, up to you how you want to approach that. I'm going to do it without that just because I just don't feel like creating a, a new object in this case. I don't think it's extremely necessary. If I were to refactor the code, maybe I'd go back and do that. But so with that done, nothing happens next or yet uh, because we aren't rendering this, we aren't calling this function anywhere yet, uh, but we will. So what I wanna do first is to actually create an image element within the figure. Cause right now a figure on its own, you can't add a source to a figure like in HTML and make it render like an image. You actually need an image element within in that class or that element. It's just kind of a nice semantic way to think about it so what I'll do is actually use the JavaScript API to create an image element. And we can access that by creating a new object from the image element that's built into the browser. So that looks like this. So we'll create a new const image value and we'll just say new image. So the image itself is an object and we can use the, the new uh, property there to create a new instance of it, which will now render as image in our variable. So I could just do console.log just to show you proof of concept here. I can type image, but we still need to call create image. So I'll go ahead and call it just for grins right now. So again, in our dev tools, we'll see just an image tag right there. Nothing on it, just a basic image tag. So with that in mind, we still need to add these attributes that we're going to need to render an image. And typically that means a source SRC attribute. And then it's also good to add an alt attribute. That's going to be great for accessibility uh, for those that might use screen readers and whatnot. So definitely don't ignore that. But we also want to add a class list as well so we can access it with CSS or class, excuse me. So I'll say image .class list dot add and we'll say image so now you'll see it has a class list a class of image great and we'll keep doing stuff stuff like that to manipulate it so we'll say since that instance has been modified we can keep adding to it so here I'll set an attribute of alt of Let's say a cloudy day at a mountain base. Your image may vary. Uh, this alt, I'll probably modify it based on when we grab an image. Uh, CodePen's great about getting some placeholder images here in a second, I'll show you how. So we can do another set attribute of source, which is gonna be where we actually source the, the image file. And we'll use a direct URL, an absolute URL to do so. so what I like to do in CodePen, if I'm just playing around, you notice there's an empty string here, so we can access a photo going to the assets button down below. Let me kill this real quick. And in this panel, we can go to photos and maybe I'll just grab this first one. If you wanna search for some, you can. I think you need to upgrade to Pro to get more here, like actual JSON data, it looks like, which is pretty neat. So just clicking on it co copies that image URL to your clipboard, which is handy. So we'll just go ahead and paste that in here. And we can go in our logs and you'll see now we have that image propagating. It's not displaying yet because we have that loading class active, but it is looking good. So next we need to focus on adding it to the DOM, which doesn't actually exist yet. If you look again in the console, if I inspect element on that figure class, there's nothing in, in it except the after bit, which is our class doing the, our CSS doing the animation. So to do that in JavaScript, you can append 
uh, to a parent element. Since we have the card image already defined, uh, we can just append to it pretty easily by doing card image dot append child, which means it adds it to the last of the elements within that element, if there are any. And in this case, it'll be image. So now if I create image, you see it loads because we've added that to our actual DOM dynamically. So there it is for it to equal. Uh, so what I don't want to call create image right here yet. So I'm going to go and backtrack that and remove this console.log. So I want to call it all at once. But before we do, I want to, um, let's see, I want to call it within our previous function right here. So we, at, at that point, I can just call this render card function just to get the full bit and caboodle. So the whole thing would actually call, this would reference this function, these would fire, we'd set our text content and things would be great. So obviously on a code pen and my pretty fast internet connection, this is gonna render immediately. If I just do a window dot add event listener load, and we could do a shorthand here. And then just say render card, which is our main function there. That's just gonna basically load, like nothing's nothing's going on there. Um, it looks like I did something wrong though. Oh, yep, I need to remove these periods. You're probably yelling at your screen. So yeah see it renders immediately. If I could save this as is and just refresh, it's just gonna pop into view once it's loaded, which, okay, that's cool, but maybe it takes longer. So for our purposes, I'm gonna actually use a set timeout function, which is a way to tell JavaScript to wait to fire something. So it looks like this, set timeout. And then you pass in another function. So I'll do the short hand version again. And right here after the curly braces is where you enter your actual time to wait. And in JavaScript, it's in milliseconds. So we got to think in terms of thousands in this case. So if you want one second, it would be a thousand. Uh, let's try three. And then here I'll actually do the render card function. So just call it right there and save it. Wait three seconds, boom. So we're Im imitating a loading state that maybe take a, might take a little while. Maybe we'll increase it to five seconds. We get our animation in play, which is great. And then boom, back into action. So you can see how cool that is, uh, how that would be great for a site that's heavy on images, heavy on content. A lot of, like when you Google images, check out how they're doing the color filling of the actual document or the image itself before they load. That's them doing something like this. Uh, the same is true for us at Dribbble. We do that with our shots. Uh, all these things, they're just kind of coming to life as things load on the screen. So that's about it. Like that little feature, it's handy, it's cool, it's neat. I really dig it on our app. So I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you can use it on your own stuff. Um, one thing I'd probably enhance is just where the data comes into view. So rather than actually not having the content on the page first, I almost either want it to be, or you know some sort of um, server-side implementation that's more accessible. Because without anything on the page, this is going to be kind of hard for like a screen reader of some sort to get any kind of data back on it, as, as well as SEO. So you have to think of things like that when you're searching for content on the website. You need that data there for it to be indexed. And if it's not, it's not going to load and your site's going to perform poorly. So these things are something to consider as you're doing something like this. Yes, it's a neat effect, but it may not be absolutely necessary to implore. One thing you might think about that I might do another video on is just lazy loading images, which is, is more of a, I would say, graceful way to load images as opposed to doing something like this where you're setting attributes on the fly. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that in future videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Definitely check out the other videos in this series. They're very short bits of 
components that are built with vanilla JS. That's the focus. So this is that continuing on. If you like this, uh, appreciate a like or subscribe. If you're not subscribed, that would be awesome. And share it with your friends. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace.